This video will cover the Geometry Regents exam from June 2015, questions 8 through 13. Number 8 says, in all isosceles triangles, the exterior angle of a base angle must always be, and then we have to kind of fill in that blank there. When I see um, a question like this and there's no picture, I always love to draw one. Remember that an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides and two congruent angles. So I'm going to just sketch this isosceles triangle, two congruent sides, two congruent angles. And I like to make up numbers for this. So let's say that this base angle is 30, which means this base angle is 30. 30 plus 30 gives us 60. That should not say not equal to. This is equals 60. And then 180 take away 60 would give us... 120. So this vertex angle up here is 120. Now these are just arbitrary numbers. I just chose 30. Um, I could have chosen 60. I could have chosen 90. 90 doesn't work actually. Um, I could have chosen any number besides 90. So here it says the exterior angle of a base angle. So here's my base angle. And then if we're talking about an exterior angle, that's the one that extends on the outside. Exterior means outside. must always be blank. So here I'm going to choose to call this X. And if we think about exterior angles, if this one on the inside is 30 and the one on the outside is X, these two should always sum to 180. So we have 30 plus X equals 180. So X equals 150. If I compare this to my choices, it looks like it's obtuse. But what if I don't think that this is always the case? Because I chose 30. Maybe I'm trying to trick you. So let's say that we have base angles that are, um, I don't know, 70? 70, 70? So those together would give us 140, which means this top part, top angle, vertex angle is 40. So extend this, and we're trying to find this piece. 70 plus x again should equal 180. 70 plus x equals 180. x equals 110. That again is still an obtuse angle. Alright, so maybe I'm really trying to trick you, trying to stump you here. Let me give you another isosceles triangle. Let's say that we go with 1 degree. 1 degree, 1 degree. These are congruent. 180 take away 2 would give us 178. So that means this exterior angle is 179 because these two have to sum to 180. This again, 179, is obtuse. So every single time, no matter what, the exterior angle of an isosceles triangle must be obtuse. And the reason being because if I had chosen a number like 100 for this base angle, that means this base angle should also be 100. But we know that in a triangle, the three angles have to sum to 180 and only 180. And I'm already over the 180 right here. So anything that's um, greater than 90 degrees will not allow you to create an, uh, an isosceles triangle. Greater than or equal to 90 degrees, I should say. Number 9 says, if triangle W prime X prime Y prime is the image of W X Y Z after the transformation rotation of 90, which statement is false? So when we think about a rotation here, let me just change colors so we see something different, because unfortunately I can't erase. Rotation of 90 preserves distance. Which means that triangles are congruent. So I'm going to immediately cross off number 3. It also means that angles are congruent, and so I'm just going to check number four. It says x, w, y, x prime, w prime, y prime. When we rotate the order of the letters, the orientation stays the same. So it preserves distance and orientation. If we check the next one, we have um, choice one. We have x, y, and x prime, y prime. Because dis distance is preserved, choice one is also true. Now in the next one it says that Wx is supposed to be parallel to the primes. When you rotate, it's not like a reflection. 
And so parallelism is not necessarily preserved between the pre-image and the image. So here, let's say that we take this right triangle, W, X, Y, and we rotate it 90 degrees. So that means it's going to look something like this. where x prime is here, y prime here, w prime here. Gets rotated 90 degrees. And so what we're asked is whether or not wx is parallel to the primes. And you can clearly, clearly see that if I were to extend these two lines infinitely, they would cross each other, which means that they are not parallel, which means that this is the false statement we were looking for. I'm just going to erase a little bit because I think I can right now so I can see question 10. Number 10 says, which equation represents the circle shown in the graph below? So the first thing you need to understand about writing the equation is that we start with x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals radius squared, where h and k are the center, and r is the radius. So I'm going to look at my equation or I'm sorry, look at the circle, find the center, find the radius, and then just plug it into the formula. So the center looks to be at over 2, up 0, so 2 comma 0. And the radius, if I just simply count boxes, is 3. Center to the outside, again, is the radius. So when I plug into my equation, we have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals radius squared, so 3 squared. x minus 2 squared is going to have to stay the same. There's nothing more we can do with that. But if you think about y plus 0, that just changes to y. Anything plus 0 is just itself. And then attach the squared equals 9. 3 squared becomes 9. So that leaves us with choice 1. So the answers for this page are the following. Number 8 is choice 3. 9 is choice 2, and 10 is choice 1. Number 11 says, in quadrilateral ABCD, each diagonal bisects opposite angles. If the measure of angle DAB is 70, then ACD must be blank. Now, this is a question that you definitely need to draw a picture for. We know it's a quadrilateral that bisects opposite angles, so I'm going to try to draw this the best that I can. To show that these opposite angles are going to be bisected, meaning they're giving us congruent parts, congruent angles. This is A, B, C, D. Always go around in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. Don't jump around when you're labeling. It says the measure of angle D, A, B is 70 degrees. So here, angle D, A, B, the whole angle is 70 degrees. This means that we can actually eliminate two options. We can get rid of a rectangle and we can get rid of square. Because this angle DAB in a rectangle and a square would have to be a right angle. If you think about sketching them, those angles are right angles. DAB being 70 is of course not a right angle. So now we've not got it narrowed down to trapezoid and rhombus. If I draw a trapezoid and I draw in the diagonals, it's very clear to see that a trapezoid with those one pair of parallel sides, it does not create congruent angles when it bisects the angles, or when the diagonals are drawn, rather. But if I draw a rhombus where we have, it's essentially a tilty square, like a square tilted, four congruent sides, and I draw in a diagonal, it's very clear that these two angles and these two angles are congruent. Therefore, our choice is 3. Number 12 says, which diagram illustrates a con correct construction of an altitude of triangle ABC? Now, an altitude is perpendicular to the opposite side. But it has to connect to the vertex. Connected to vertex. So what we need to do is actually start by creating a smiley arc from the vertex. Say this is my vertex up here. Create a smiley arc. And then from there we get two endpoints. 
from here we would construct the perpendicular bisector and then pass straight through. So we essentially need three markings. Three markings. So again, smiley arc, arcs above and below, and construct right through, which gives us choice two. This construction, although it doesn't have the arcs above, if you were to follow through, you would see that this is the construction of a perpendicular bisector. Number 13 says, from external point A, two tangents to circle O are drawn. So I'm going to sketch this circle. We have circle O, which means the center is O. Two tangents are drawn to the circle. And so tangents touch the circle one time. from an external point, say A. All right, so I'm touching once here, touching once here. The point of tangency are B and C. Chord BC is drawn to form triangle ABC. If the measure of angle ABC is 66, what is the measure of angle A? So I'm going to box this in, call it X, because that's what I'm looking for. ABC is 66. Now we know that when we have two tangents drawn to a circle, we get something called the hat theorem. Um, this is because it looks like a hat. If you were to kind of draw this picture on its side, it kind of looks like a party hat. Ooh, party! And we know that two sides of a hat, those two tangents, must be congruent because you wouldn't want a lopsided hat, of course. So if these two sides of the triangle with those tangents are congruent, then that means that this is actually an isosceles triangle. So that means this angle, ACB, is also 66. And then we just apply the fact that three angles in a triangle equal 180. So now we have 66 plus 66 plus X equals 180. So we have 132 plus x equals 180, and when we solve for x, we get x equals 48, and because I chose to call a x, then that means a is 48. So the answers for this page are the following. We have number 11 is choice 3, 12 is choice 2, and 13 is choice 2.